Back in June of 2012, Juana Villegas chose to wear handcuffs while demonstrating in Nashville, Tennessee. It was a symbolic nod to the reason, according to the New York Times, that last week Villegas, an undocumented immigrant, was awarded a $490,000 settlement and possibly a resident visa that is generally offered to crime victims. Why? Because after a 2008 arrest in Nashville, among other indignities, she was shackled to a bed while in labor with the little guy that you see there. That's her son. And as our guest, Silky Shaw, details in her guest post on our website, mhpshow.com, that case is just a symbol of a massive problem. The detention of undocumented immigrants, detention that is run on a quota requiring at least 34,000 immigrants be detained daily. Silky, from the moment that you had a conversation with my executive producer about this requirement, he was walking around going, did you guys know that there is a requirement that 34,000 people, this kind of bed mandate, what is the, the, the sort of, where did that come from, that bed mandate? It actually came from, we were talking about this earlier, it came out in 2007 because people didn't feel like Bush was doing enough. So it's in the Appropriations mm -hmm. Committee, they put in the mandate, and you know, one thing to note about immigration detention, 50% of beds, of those 34,000 beds, are operated by private prison companies oh. that lobby heavily <laughs> to get these contracts, and also they lobby the Appropriations Committee. And so they've included this mandate hmm. without any understanding of really who needs to be in detention. I mean, essentially, you need to find people to deport in order to fill this mandate yep. and that's it's as simple as that and so with in a, in a moment like the one we're in now where we have declining um, immigration particularly declining undocumented immigration then that means you have to reach deeper and deeper down to folks who are in fact not criminals by any definition of what we would think of as meaningful crime right um, in other words, there's status offenses, right? The offense right. is simply being here without papers. Anybody who's in detention is there for a civil violation. So they're there, they don't have a sentence. It's not like the criminal justice system. Yep. You don't get a lawyer, you don't have a sentence, you don't have a right to a phone call often, and you're there for an undetermined amount of time. And they're there for a civil violation. They're not, you know, and if you have a crime, Maybe you've committed it, and you've committed it in the past, but you've already gone through the criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. And don't we say everyone deserves a second chance, right? Nope. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> I would no. Hope but, we say that. but the other thing I want to point out is that of our immigration detention system, actually, a lot of people who are inside are not just undocumented, yep. but they're legal permanent residents mm -hmm. who who have past convictions. So pre the '96 laws that changed yep. us, have a marijuana conviction, serve their time in the '80s, and then end up in detention. So the story of Juana Villegas really, again, also captured us in part, Raul, because the notion of detention. I, mean, I think there's something about that language that sounds almost benign, like, mm -hmm. "Oh, you're detained," and and right. when you know when you read the reporting on it, they say, "Oh, they have televisions," a big, but. But then you, you read a, a story like Juana Villegas and you realize just how vulnerable people are. Right. And, you know, the unfortunate reality, there are many stories like hers. We just don't often hear them because um, of the way this system operates. And really, when we when we talk about this arbitrary bed mandate, you have to just think of it this way, you know, by means of a, an analogy. Imagine if we had a prison system where we said no matter w what the crime rate, no matter what was going on in the country, no matter, you know, what season or what year, what decade we're in, we are going to have X number of people in prison. That's, well, we, we almost that's, do, you know, right, it's, it's, because it's of the crazy. private incentive. Yeah. Yeah. We, and, we pretty and, much and that's what we're doing in, yeah. in, in immigration detention and the way the government operates these systems, as we, we spoke on it during the break, because immigration is a civil violation, mm -hmm. you don't have any of these rights, you know, right to counsel, you don't get your Miranda rights, nothing like that. Yet, from the time you are detained to the time you are deported, you are treated as a criminal. You're yeah. shackled, you're behind bars, you, yeah. you, you, you can be put in solitary confinement. And it's, a, it's, a, it's really a shame, uh, a stain on our justice system. And there are many people also in this system who are asylum seekers, yeah. victims of domestic abuse, mm -hmm. refugees right. from Central America, all kinds of people get swept up in this system. I yeah. Igor, it feels to me like consistently there are sort of two themes that, that show up in this conversation. One is a national security theme, the need to protect our borders, and the other one is an economic um, competition theme, and the idea that these people are taking jobs from good Americans. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess I just wonder, like when I hear these stories or we look at having to detain 34,000 people. How far are we from, from I mean, because those are legitimate issues. Economic security, yes. border security are real issues, mm -hmm. but they don't seem addressed by how we do immigration in this country. Well, certainly not with this detention system. And I just want to say, it's great we finally found a mandate that Republicans can support. <laughs> they can get behind it. They're for yeah. it all the way. 
Wow, tremendous. <laughs> and, you know, you even look at the economic argument. You try to make, you know, how are you going to convince Republicans mm -hmm. to get on board? You try to make the conservative argument. Mm -hmm. You make the argument that it grows the GDP, yep. that economic, lifts wages across the board, economic benefits all throughout the economy. Or even on this detention point, you say, what about alternatives mm -hmm. to this kind of detention? Costs about $10 yep, a day compared to some $150 a day. Don't you guys like this? Yep. You conservative. No, they don't because there's other interests, the private prisons, other interests in play. So. You know, there is, I think, an economic argument, and that's an argument that we're going to hear hopefully this coming week from the business community, but that has to be paired with this human argument that the religious groups are going to be pushing for that so, grassroots right, campaign. Right. So, so, so grassroots social movement is part of it. Any other bright lights that you see, Julian? Yeah, it's bright that business is behind this. Yep. They always mm -hmm. have been, but they're now organizing against a party they support, the Republican the Party. And there is just... We, we passed immigration reform in 1965, and that's uh, the influx that we've seen. And we've never really had a comprehensive solution to how to deal with everything from security to a path to citizenship. Yep. So there's a time, uh, uh, an issues time has come argument. Yep. And I think there are many Republicans, frankly, who privately and yep. some publicly agree with this. Um, and so I think if you have those three pressure points uh, come together, there's a chance, there's yep. a chance in, in, uh, for this to work. Yeah, immigration is one of those things that actually draws, if people are really just operating on interest, will draw lines somewhat differently. One of the other ones, of course, is education, on which there is actually a very bizarre bipartisan agreement, which we're going to start talking Talking about next, let me first say thank you to Raul Reyes, to Julian Zelizer, to Silky Shaw, and to Igor Volsky for being here. I'm also going to send everybody over to our website. It is functioning, <laughs> mhpshow.com, <laughs> to read the guest post from Silky Shaw, which is yeah. online now. And up next, we're going to talk to.